I am Leonardo da Vinci by Brad Meltzer, illustrated by Christopher Iliopoulos. And look at the front cover, you can see Leonardo da Vinci. And who is he painting a picture of? Do you know who? That's the Mona Lisa. So let's see, we're gonna open up the book. Ooh, it's spinning. Oh, cool, look at that. So the picture is right inside the cover. What is that? It's a paintbrush. Very good. I am Leonardo da Vinci. I am Leonardo da Vinci. There he is. And look inside. That must be like his workshop where he created so many things. I was born in Italy in a small town called Vinci. People think da Vinci is my last name, but it's just where I'm from. In Italian, da Vinci means from Vinci. What are you looking at, Leonardo? Everything. Back in the 1400s, Italy was one of the most exciting places to live. Something called the Renaissance was happening and people started using art, science, architecture, and even politics to see things in brand new ways. Look at that building. Look at these carvings. Look at these silks. Look at this painting. As a young boy, I went hiking one day and found this amazing cave. I wanted to know what was inside. Whoa! At first, I tried peeking in, but the cave was too dark. Right there, I felt two things, fear and desire, because I really wanted to know what was in there. I bent the other way, but still couldn't see anything. The closer I looked, the darker it seemed, like the shadows themselves would swallow me whole. Standing at that cave, I made my decision. If you want to learn something new, you have to follow your curiosity. The rewards are unimaginable. Whoa! I found a whale fossil embedded in the wall. To see a mighty creature like that, I realized just how powerful nature can be. That is pretty cool. Back then, the richest kids with the proper background went to the best schools. I didn't. At this Abacus school, I learned some math but mostly I was self-taught. That means that he taught himself. By teaching myself, I was more open to new experiences and ideas. As a result, I didn't think like everyone else. I didn't even write like everyone else. I was left-handed, which back then was considered weird and odd. Instead of writing left to right, I wrote right to left, drawing each letter backward like this to use a mirror to read it. So if you flip that, you can do and see what it says. It may seem like secret code, but it wasn't. It was just a way to keep the ink from smudging, a common practice back then. I wasn't the best student. I'd get easily distracted and bored unless I was doing something creative like art. Whoa, you drew that? You're pretty good. I did. I still have a lot to learn. When I was 14, my father showed me some of my drawings to one of the best local artists, Andrea del Verrocchio. Your son drew that? I'm astonished. He did. Pretty good, huh? I became his apprentice, which is a fancy way of saying he became my teacher. He taught me how to mix paints, draw and sculpt from models, and work with machinery on large projects. Most important in Verrocchio's workshop, there were people talking about anatomy, geometry, architecture, and antiquities. Plus, there were books on every subject. You can put a circle inside a square like this. Whoa. My first preserved art was a shield I painted for someone. I'll put a monster on it like a dragon that breathes fire and spits poison. 
To make it realistic, I used more than paint. I took real body parts from lizards, snakes, bats, crickets, grasshoppers, and even butterflies and attached them piece by piece. Looks real, right? <laughs> the smell was so bad, my father kept the shield and bought a new one for the client. What's that smell? Art. It wasn't my best work, but the shield did sell and was eventually owned by the Duke of Milan. You don't become an artist overnight. It takes practice and patience drawing things over and over. Again, draw it again. In my art, I wanted things to look like they did in real life. So I'd practice drawing drapes with plenty of folds and shadows. The key was mastering this. Number one, chiaroscuro, which means light, dark in Italian, and explains how I used light and shadows to make things look real. And two, sfumato, which means making the lines blurry so it looks even more realistic. If you do it right, you get this. Ta-da! That's my real drawing. Was I perfect? Not at all. I'd get so distracted and sometimes felt so alone that I didn't finish many of my paintings. And when I did finish, I didn't think the work was very good. Another bad one. You really think that's bad? No matter what I was working on, I'd carefully examine each subject, studying every detail. I was especially interested in birds. Look how a bird's wings are more curved at the front. Is that how they fly? What do their tails do? Is that how they steer? He really looks closely at things, doesn't he? My greatest strengths were curiosity and observation. Everything I saw, I'd put in my notebooks. Look at the dragonfly. When it flies, its front wings are higher and its rear wings are lower. He really wants to learn about flying, doesn't he? I wanted to learn about everything. Each day was an opportunity to observe something new. I'd fill notebooks with drawings, ideas, art, and anything else I found interesting, including long lists of things I wanted to do. Find out how to walk on ice, learn how math can put a square inside a triangle, learn how to repair a lock, get a measurement of the sun from the Frenchman I meant. Why is the sky blue? Why are fish in the water faster than a bird in the sky? Why do our eyes only see in a straight line? How do clouds form? What's yawning? What is yawning? <laughs> How did I find the answers? By observing every detail. At the top of Monte Rosa, I figured out why the sky is blue. It's light reflecting off particles in the air. Observe a goose's foot. Describe the jaw of a crocodile. Describe the tongue of a woodpecker. The more questions you ask, the more answers you'll find. Over time, in addition to being an artist, I became an architect. This was a real bridge I designed. And an engineer. Accurate and precise maps. Who wants to take a trip? We've got these things called roads. He invented this crank as well to move stuff and a musician. I designed a new instrument, a cross between an organ and violin, the viola organista, which is a really fun thing to say. And a scientist. To understand our bodies, I studied bones and organs, making detailed drawings. By looking at how water flows on the sides of a river, I figured out how the heart works and how it pumps. Did you know the heart is a muscle? And a dentist. By studying teeth, I was a pioneer of dentistry. Say, ah! Wait, did I mention I was a scientist? Look at this human arm. When it bends just right, it resembles a bird's wing. Isn't that beautiful? And of course, I was also an inventor. Every new piece of information led to new breakthroughs. Check out my designs. The tank, the submarine, 
scuba gear, a hang glider, an early try at a helicopter. This tent covered with cloth is an early parachute, even though no one had ever flown before. And speaking of flying, check out these wings based on bats. Whoa, what are you doing now? Trying to figure out how the face works. Which muscles open your eyes? Which ones raise your brows? And which ones create the perfect smile? This is my most famous painting, the Mona Lisa. I worked on it for 16 years. 16 years, carrying it with me until the day I died. For over a decade, I'd repaint it, trying to fill it with every amazing new thing I learned about humans and nature. He used sfumato to blur the edges of her mouth. It's what makes her smile change depending on how you look at it. Today, people wonder who she was. She wasn't anyone famous. She was just like the rest of us ordinary and amazing, full of mysteries and questions, just like the world around us. In my life, people called me a genius, a Renaissance man. They also said I was weird and odd. That's not a bad thing. Nothing amazing happens by thinking like everyone else. Look closely at nature. No two trees are the same. No two humans are either. That means no one will see the world as you do. That's not weird or odd. It's beautiful. Do what hasn't been done before. Build what hasn't been built before. When you do, no one will be able to look away. Today, there are 7,200 pages of Leonardo da Vinci's notebooks filled with ideas about art, flight, geology, botany, anatomy, biology, and mechanics. Back in 1994, Bill Gates bought one of the notebooks for $30 million. Throughout his life, Leonardo was obsessed with flight. He loved birds so much, he'd buy them and immediately set them free. This very last, the very last thing Leonardo wrote in his notebook was a math problem. He left it unfinished and wrote, etc because the soup is getting cold. Some of us, his ideas didn't become realities for another 500 years. His theories on the human heart were finally proven right in the 1960s. And his wings, they inspired Bill Finger and Bob Kane's design for Batman. It's true, without Leonardo da Vinci, there would be no Batman. I loved many things. Whatever your passions are, Follow them all. Sometimes crazy ideas are the best ideas, even the ones that fail. My wings didn't help me fly. My scuba gear didn't let me breathe underwater. My pre-helicopter never took off. But over time, as technology and innovation caught up with my ideas, every single one of them worked. Stay curious, ask questions. Look closely and always be daring. I am Leonardo da Vinci, and I know that new ideas are beautiful. And this is another one of his famous paintings called The Last Supper that was painted in 1495. There he is. Wisdom is the sustenance and truly dependable wealth of the mind. Leonardo da Vinci, and that's a picture of what he really looked like. He was born April 15th, 1452, near Vinci, Italy. Then in 1468, he joined Verrocchio Studio in Florence, which is another place in Italy. Then in 1473, he made his first known drawing. 1477, he opened his own workshop in Florence. Then he moved to Milan, another city in Italy, in 1482. 
And then, oh, there's a picture right there of um, Vinci, Italy. So that's where he's from. Here is a picture. Now this is cool. That's a picture of people taking a picture of the Mona Lisa, which is in the Louvre Museum, which is in Paris, France. Now, interestingly enough, I have seen the Mona Lisa and it's really tiny. You think when you see it, it's gonna be this huge big painting and it's really, really a tiny picture. Here is a self-portrait in chalk at age 50. So self-portrait means that Leonardo da Vinci actually drew his own picture of himself. Isn't that amazing? That is amazing. So then um, he made his first attempt at a flying machine in 1498. He became an engineer for the military in 1502. He began painting the Mona Lisa in 1503. And remember, it was 16 years. He made his second attempt to fly in 1505. And then he died May 2nd, 1519 in Clois, Luce in France. So he had gone from Italy to France and he passed away in France. So that means he was about 50, 69, 67 years old when he passed away. So that's how he was lived to be 67. And that, my friends, is the story of Leonardo da Vinci. He knows that new ideas are beautiful.